So, take a look at these two girls. Can you tell which one has a boyfriend? It's the girl on the left. Look, there's someone's tie in the background. Now, take a look at these girls in a cafe. Who's having a date and who came alone? The girl on the right has two sets of dishes, so she's with someone. Jake got in a car accident and lost his memory. He was a popular guy in school, and every girl wanted to date him. Since Jake couldn't remember anyone, some reckless girls decided to take their chance. On Monday, three girls, Emerson, Coco, and Geneva, visited him. Each of them said she was his girlfriend. Can you tell who his real girlfriend is? Take a closer look at Jake's shoulder. He has a tattoo saying J plus G. These must be the first letters of his and his girlfriend's names. So his real girlfriend is Geneva. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She tried to find her way back home, but instead, she stumbled across a witch's house. She pet the cat and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was busy cleaning the house, and she had a riddle for Esme. So, I have two types of pet insects, spiders and flies. I have 32 spiders, and flies make up 50% of my pet insect population. How many flies do I have? <laughs> Esme solved the riddle. Can you? If there are just two types and flies make up 50%, then spiders make the other 50%. There are 32 spiders, so there are 32 flies, too. Lovely. Right before a restaurant was about to open, someone stole all the money from the office. A detective arrived for interrogation. A cook said that he was working hard and didn't have time to walk or gaze around, so he didn't see anything. The security guy said that he was in the bathroom and didn't steal anything. The waiter said he remembered seeing one visitor heading to the office. Somehow, he ignored it and didn't stop them. The waiter got arrested for stealing the money. Why? The restaurant was yet closed, and there couldn't be any visitors. Kennedy woke up in some dungeon. She tried to escape, but the door was locked. All of a sudden, a clock appeared and started ticking. It said that there would be an explosion in half a minute if she didn't crack the code. It was just one number, but the trick was that Kennedy only had two attempts. Luckily, there was a hint. Kennedy tried 60, but it didn't work. What must be her second guess? Remember the clock? When an hour hand points at 1, it means 5 minutes. When it points at 2, 10 minutes, and so on. So 12 equals 0. One rainy evening, Poppy drove to her boyfriend's neighborhood to return his hoodie. She walked in the house for a couple of minutes and forgot to lock the car. When she returned, she called the police because her laptop had been stolen from the back seat. The detective said that the girl had lied. Why? Poppy has a two-door car. There's no back seat in her automobile. Ms. Brown, Ms. White, and Mr. Green are best friends who met up at a restaurant to celebrate their college graduation. Ms. White suddenly noticed one fun fact and said, Look, we're all wearing our colors, but no one wears their color. Yeah, Virginia White, you're right, responded the girl in a green dress. Can you tell who is who? So, Ms. White can only be wearing a green or a brown dress. Since a girl in a green dress responded to her, Virginia White is wearing a brown dress. 
This leaves us with the fact that the girl in the green dress must be Miss Brown, and the girl in the white dress must be Miss Green. Madeline wanted to make her dad the best present for his birthday. The problem was that she had zero ideas. She decided to sneak into her dad's computer and see what he has saved in his online shopping cart. The computer required a password, and Madeline didn't know it. Can you help her figure it out? Look at the desk. There's a note, and it has quite a lot of typos. It could be done on purpose. Find every typo and put them together. O in laundry, extra L in school, I in clean, C in basement, and V in answer. So the password is O-L-I-C-V. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's IDs and to not let any suspicious people in. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who wasn't supposed to enter the club. So, here's the first one. She seems fine, let her in. What do you say about this girl? Don't let her in. The month and date are flipped. She must have a fake ID. Bye, girl. Okay, next. Look, in or out. Look, the guy in the photo has a tattoo on his neck, but in reality, he doesn't have one. That's suspicious. Don't let him in. Okay, here's the next guest. He seems fine to me. And this girl? She seems alright. Green light. Okay, another one. In or out? Look, there's a typo in birth. Official documents don't have any typos, so this ID must be fake. I wouldn't let her in. Melody and Belle are sisters. Melody has cool clothes, and Belle always borrows something from her without permission. One day, Melody was going to a party and couldn't find her favorite top. She knocked on her sister's door. Belle opened the door, but saw it was her sister and shut it. In a couple of seconds, Melody broke into the room and started searching for the top. But she didn't find it anywhere and had to leave. On her way out, she remembered something and managed to find it. Where? Melody remembered that when Belle opened the door, she had her hoodie unzipped. After she shut the door, Belle zipped it. She was wearing the top. Atlas was wandering in a forest and came across a huge mansion. He walked in, and the doors behind him got locked. There were three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a room with poisonous gas that made your skin melt. Behind the second door, there was a hungry wolf. Behind the third door, there was a window, but there was no ladder. How can Atlas escape safely? He should pick the third door. He just walked in, so he's on the first floor. He won't need a ladder to get out of the window safely. Mr. Mason didn't really like a huge tree growing by his neighbor's house because it hid the sun. He was super happy when the tree was no more one day after a raging storm at night. Still, his neighbor called the police and reported Mr. Mason for cutting the tree on purpose. Mr. Mason denied doing it. Who is right? If it were the storm that broke the tree, the cut would be messy. But the tree is perfectly sawn off. So, it's some person's work. Maybe not Mr. Mason, but definitely not the storm. Kaya likes having fun, so she decided that she would only tell the truth on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and lie on all other days. So, one day, she said, tomorrow I will tell the truth. What day did Kaya say it? If Kaya says it on one of the days she tells the truth, then she will lie, because she lies the next day. So, she said it on a day she lies. And the next day, she must lie too, because she lied about telling the truth. The only case when she can lie two days in a row is Saturday and Sunday. So, she must have said it on Saturday. Enola got poisoned after school. A detective interrogated the classmates, 
and one girl said she saw another girl, Bethany, adding something to Enola's water bottle. No one else saw it. Bethany said that she had been in a cafe after school, and her boyfriend confirmed that. The cafe's employee said that she indeed had seen Bethany and her boyfriend. She even showed a picture from the security camera. Still, Bethany was arrested for poisoning Enola. Why? Take a look at the picture of Bethany. She has a birthmark on her left cheek. But the girl on the security camera who was in the cafe with Bethany's boyfriend didn't have it. It turns out she had a twin sister who lied for her. Kara is an archaeologist who explores ancient caves. So she got trapped in one of them. She found another way, but she was on the bottom of a 45-foot cave. Kara's only option was to climb up. Every day, she could climb up 15 feet, and during the night, she would slip 5 feet down. How many days will it take her to get out? Four. In the evening of the first day, Carol will be 15 feet up, but in the morning of the second day, she'll be at 10 feet. In the morning of the third day, she'll be 20 feet up, and in the morning of the fourth day, she'll be 30 feet up. Then, by the end of the day, she'll make the remaining 15 feet and get out. Mrs. Lawrence grounded her daughter Madison for bad grades. She worked night shifts and had to leave for work. The night was warm and bright. Just like Mrs. Lawrence expected, when she returned home, she knew that Madison had sneaked out at night for a party. How did she understand it? If you paid attention, you could notice that the car was parked differently when Mrs. Lawrence was leaving the house. This means that Madison used it at night. The little sneak. Hey, what if I show you some logos, and you'll have to guess which one is the correct one? Let's start with Tesla. Which one do you choose? Yes, it's the one on the right. BMW. What's your choice? Again, the one on the right. Our next one is Subaru. What do you think? It's the one on the left. Do you like online shopping? What's the correct eBay logo? It's red, blue, yellow, and green. So, the one on the right. And now, Coca-Cola. What do you say? The left one, of course. Subway, white and yellow, or yellow and white? White and yellow, the one on the left. Are you a Redditor? Not that it matters, I just need your vote. And the left one is the correct logo. Abigail wanted to give her mom the best birthday present ever, but she had zero ideas. So she decided to sneak into her mom's computer and check what she had saved in her online shopping cart. When her mom left for work, Abigail sneaked into her office and turned on the computer. It required a password, but the girl didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note right next to the computer saying 9669. Abby tried it, but it didn't work. What's the password? The note is just turned upside down. The girl should try 6996. Mrs. Grossman left a jewelry store and found out that she'd forgotten her wallet at the cashier's desk. She returned, but the wallet wasn't there. She called the police. When they arrived, they asked if someone had seen the wallet. Lexi, the cashier, said that she hadn't seen it. Stephen, a customer, said that he had come up to the cashier to ask something, but he hadn't noticed any wallet. Cole, another customer, said that he'd been busy talking on the phone with his wife.
It was Stephen. He said there had been no wallet near the cashier's desk, but no one specified where the lady had lost the wallet. The guy knew it because he'd taken it. Esme was having a walk deep in the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she saw the witch's house. The witch was having a party. She turned 300 years old. Esme stuck around for a while to hang out with the witch and her friends. But then, the girl asked the witch to show her the way out. She answered that Esme had to help them. They had three chocolate bars and there were five people. Esme had to share these bars in such a way that everyone got the same amount of chocolate. If she succeeded, she'd go home. If not, she'd have to stay until the witch's 400th birthday. How can Esme share the chocolate? She should break each of the bars into five pieces. This way, everyone will get three pieces in total. On the last day of school, one of the students, Oakley, went missing. A detective arrived to investigate the case. There were three suspects, Mrs. Adams, the principal, Mr. Jones, the cleaning man, and Nora, Oakley's classmate. Mrs. Adams said she had a lot of paperwork to finish. She had spent the whole day in her office. Mr. Jones admitted he knew Oakley, but he said that he had nothing to do with this incident. Nora said she stayed at school after classes to do her homework for the next day, but she didn't see Oakley after the classes had finished. Who should the detective arrest? Nora, she said she'd been doing her homework, but it was the last day of school. No more homework. She's hiding something. Now, I'll show you some pictures and you'll have to figure out what's wrong with them. Let's go. Here's the first one. Look, the book's spine is on the wrong side. Okay, the next one. The road sign says that one can only turn right from the right lane, but there's no road there. Okay, I'm giving you a break. This should be easy for you. What's wrong here? Right, the athletes are playing soccer with a baseball. You gotta be very attentive. Here's a picture, but something is wrong in it. What is it? Look, the pool is frozen. No fun. In a small and quiet town, someone started to rob the bank every once in a while. The person was so fast that the police couldn't catch them. After another robbery, the police saw the criminal entering a grocery store. There were three customers inside, and they became the main suspects. Can you tell who the robber is? It's the girl in the middle. The first woman is wearing high heels, which means she wouldn't be able to run so fast. The third girl has a cast on her leg, so she's not a robber either. Detective Callum had to travel to a small town where young women disappeared every day. Four of them were already missing. Anna, Elle, Hannah, and Ada. After doing some research, the detective decided that the next target would be one of these four girls, Riley, Ellie, Ashley and Eve. Can you figure out who it will be? It seems like all the missing girls have palindromic names. Those sound the same no matter whether you read them from left to right or from right to left. The only girl with a palindromic name is Eve, so she must be the next target. While Mr. Coleman, a rich gentleman, was on vacation, his office was robbed. The police started an investigation. They found fingerprints of three people and interrogated them. Noelle, Mr. Coleman's secretary, said that she'd been coming to the office to water the plants. Rob, the man's business partner, said that he'd come once to get some important documents. Brandon, the cleaning man, said that he'd been washing the floor every two days. Who robbed the office? It was Noelle. She said she'd been watering the plants, but look, 
There's not a single plant in Mr. Coleman's office. John was on an expedition to the South Pole. One day, he woke up in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what happened, but he knew he had to get out. He saw three doors and a poster. It said that behind the first door, there was a room filled with toxic gas. Behind the second one, there was a huge lake. And behind the third door, there was a room where sharp icicles fell from the ceiling every second. John couldn't swim. Which door should he choose to stay safe? He should pick the second door. He's at the South Pole. It's cold there, so the lake must be frozen, and the guy won't have to swim. Aurora decided to spend her summer vacation in the countryside. She loved taking long trips to the nearby forest on her own. Once, she came across an old mansion. It dated back to the 18th century, and no one had lived there since then. It was dusty inside. There was no light or electricity, but the place was beautiful. Suddenly, the door got locked behind Aurora's back. She saw three ways out. Behind the first door, there were many hungry rats. Behind the second door, there was a 500-foot deep hole. Behind the third door, there was an electro laser that would immediately burn her. Which door is safe? The third one, there's no electricity, so the laser won't work. Dylan was abroad, enjoying the sun and his long-awaited vacation. One day, he met a beautiful girl at the beach. The guy spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Dylan was devastated, but luckily, the girl liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper to give him a hint. Here's what it said. Can you figure out the girl's name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Laura. It must be the girl's name. Jelena wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mom didn't let her go. Mrs. Miller felt bad for not allowing her daughter to have some fun. Then, she remembered that her parents had recently moved to a little farm and got some goats. She suggested that Jelena should visit her grandparents on the farm instead. The girl agreed, but instead of going to the farm, she went to the party. When Jelena returned home on Sunday evening, her mom asked her if she had liked the farm. The girl said yes. She didn't know how chickens were so cute. After this, Jelena got grounded. Why? There were only goats on the grandparents' farm. Her mom figured out the girl hadn't gone there. Otherwise, she'd know it. It was snowing in the morning. Detective Callum didn't have much work during the day, but in the evening, the owner of the jewelry store reported that his business had been robbed. Detective Callum asked people who lived next door what they had been doing at that time. In three houses, people said they hadn't left home that day. But the detective figured out that one of them was lying. Who was it, and how did the detective understand it? It was someone from the second house. It was snowing in the morning. If no one had left home, there wouldn't be any snow under the cars. But there's snow underneath this car. A rich woman was traveling on a little but fancy cruise ship. She was robbed one night during a storm. Someone said that one of the passengers, Logan, had been very suspicious the whole time. He'd always been watching the woman. The detective interrogated Logan, but the man denied stealing anything. He said that during the storm, he'd been in his cabin writing a letter to his wife. He then showed the letter to the detective. Here it is, take a look at it. Why did the detective arrest Logan? Logan said he'd been writing the letter during the storm, but the ship was rocking on the waves. The handwriting is too neat for Logan to be saying the truth. Mike has recently left his job. He's looking for a new, more exciting one. But so far, all his attempts have brought zero results. Can you tell how many job interviews he has failed by looking at his apartment?
take a look at this schedule on the wall. In the previous month, Mike marked all working days with green color, and the weekends were red. At that time, he most likely still had his job. And the current month has six stickers with the letter I. Mike has most likely attended six interviews. Mike was losing hope when he found a weird letter in his mailbox. An elegant little note said, If you manage to figure out our phone number, call us. We'll offer you a dream job. Can you help Mike see the number? It's 713819. Mike called this number. A mysterious voice asked him to solve a riddle. I make two people out of one. What am I? In a minute, Mike received an official invitation to his dream job interview. What did he answer? A mirror. When Mike arrived at the meeting location, he found a large gloomy building in the middle of nowhere. The door slammed shut behind the guy's back as soon as he got inside. Mike found himself in a hallway with three doors. He noticed a boat, an insect spray, and an astronaut suit on the floor. The same mysterious voice said, You can choose only one tool and one door. Good luck. There are venomous spiders behind the first door. A hungry lion is waiting behind the second door. And finally, there's a swamp emitting toxic fumes behind the third door. What should Mike choose to pass this test and stay alive? He should pick the astronaut suit and the first door. Spiders won't be able to bite through the suit. In the next room, the voice offered Mike to have a coffee break. But the guy had to choose wisely because only one type of snack was safe to eat. Can you help Mike pick the right food? Mm -hmm. There are human nails in the cupcakes and cockroaches in these chips. The color of the meat in this burger is very suspicious. This sushi set looks rather edible, but its smell attracts too many flies. Mike should choose these donuts. They look fresh mm -hmm. and appetizing. The cafeteria was filled with people. The voice told Mike to find a thief among them. Can you help Mike get some bonuses for his attentiveness? This woman over there is the thief. She's hiding spoons in her pocket. After lunch, Mike headed for the next room. But before the guy got inside, he had to solve a riddle to open the door. Some will use me, others will not. Some remember me, others forget. I can't be picked up off the ground or tossed into the sea. You can only gain me with time. What am I? The correct answer is knowledge. Mike entered a beautiful party hall filled with people in costumes and masks. The voice told Mike to go find one ghost, one zombie, and one thief among these people. Look at this crowd very attentively. Can you see them? The guy over there doesn't seem to have legs, and he's levitating. He must be a ghost. Look at this woman's food. Only zombies would eat that. And the woman over there is the thief. Her diamond ring doesn't fit her finger. Also, the ring is very similar to this lady's jewelry set. Mike tried to open the next door and receive a new question immediately. I look flat, but I'm deep. Hidden realms I shelter. Lives I take, but food I offer. At times, I am beautiful. I can be calm, angry, and turbulent. I have no heart, but I offer pleasure and freedom. No man can own me, yet I encompass what all men must have. What am I? Mike solved this riddle and entered the next room. Have you figured out the answer too? The correct answer is, I'm the ocean. 
Mike saw the next door, but whatever he did, he couldn't open it. He spotted an electronic lock on the door and a map of a maze on the wall. The voice said that Mike must solve the riddle to open the door. Can you help? If you go through the maze from start to finish, you'll get 6251. This is the code. When Mike finally entered the room, he saw a locked safe. The voice said that Mike's task was to open the safe. What buttons should he press? The puzzles present three colors, pink, white, and brown. Mike pressed the correct buttons and unlocked the safe, but he only found one small coin inside. The next room was empty, except for an old vending machine in the corner. Mike came closer and noticed a small key inside the machine. Suddenly, the walls began to move. The room was getting smaller and smaller. The voice told Mike to be careful because the vending machine was broken. Some wires were torn and mixed up. Which button should Mike press to get the key out and get out of the room before it's too late? Mike should use the coin from the previous challenge and press the fourth button. Then the voice asked Mike to find the odd image in this pattern. Can you help the guy? The couple over there is different. In another room, Mike met a nice elderly lady, Miss Jason. She was very upset because someone had broken into her apartment. Mike's task was to find the robber. He inspected the crime scene and questioned three witnesses. The cleaning lady, Sarah, said that she'd finished her work at 11 p.m. and left. Billy, a passerby, said that he'd seen a suspicious man in a mask in Miss Jason's window. Kelly, the neighbor, was visiting her boyfriend in another city. Who's lying? Billy, he's a passerby and just met Miss Jason, then how come he knows which window is hers? It got very dark outside, but Mike's weird quest continued. He entered a jewelry store and its owner explained the guy his next task. Someone had broken into the store and taken the most expensive diamond jewelry. But luckily, the robber left their fingerprints on the shards of broken glass. There are three suspects, a werewolf, an elf, and a zombie. Can you help Mike find the real robber? It was the elf. He's the only creature among them with human-like fingerprints. Another door led Mike into a creepy lab. There, he saw a mad scientist playing a strange game with his patients. He asked them to choose between two pills. One of them was a harmless capsule with vitamins, while the other one was a sleeping pill. Somehow, the scientist managed to get the harmless pill every time he played this game, and his opponents always fell asleep. How was this possible, and what should Mike do to pass this test? Both pills were actually harmless. The scientist added a special substance to the glasses of water he offered his patients to wash down the pills. So, to stay awake, Mike should switch the glasses or simply refuse to drink any water. The next door was locked, but Mike saw six buttons with the images of a candle, fire, gloves, scissors, an apple, and a light bulb. The voice said, I was carried into a dark room and set on fire. I wept, and then my head was cut off. What am I? One minute later, Mike was already walking towards his next challenge. What button did he press to open the door? the button with the candle on it. Suddenly, the lights went out. Mike slipped and fell into a swimming pool. Someone turned the light on again, and Mike saw three identical ladies in the pool. All three of them looked like ordinary women and claimed to be human. But in reality, two of them are mermaids. How can Mike find the real woman among them? He can dive and find the one without a tail. 
The mermaids told Mike that they wouldn't let him out of the pool until he solved another riddle. I'm so fast you can't see me, although everyone else can see straight through me. I'm with you until your last breath. What am I? Can you help Mike solve this riddle and escape? The correct answer is the blink of an eye. The mermaids let Mike go and he entered the next room. On a huge screen, there were two guys. The first one was taking a selfie with a tornado. The second one was standing under an umbrella in the middle of a thunderstorm and taking pictures. Mike had to decide whose behavior is riskier. The tornado is very close. Therefore, the first guy is in greater danger. At the same time, the second guy will have enough time for another couple of shots. In the next room, Mike saw five zombies behind bars. All those guys were suspected of stealing a car. Mike had to decide which of them was the thief. Have you guessed? The guy on the left is sweating a lot, and zombies don't sweat and don't drive cars. He must be the thief. He's just wearing zombie makeup. Mike entered a kitchen. His task was to decide how many people lived in the house. Can you guess? Three people. There are three different drinks on the table and three chairs. Now look at this bathroom. How many people live in this apartment? Just one. Take a look at this lonely toothbrush. And how many people live in this place? Two people. Look at the family portrait. Mike saw three musicians rehearsing for a performance in a garage. The voice announced his next task, to find one suspicious detail. Have you already spotted it? There's something wrong with this fire extinguisher. Finally, Mike found himself in an ordinary street. The voice said they had only one last question. What's the time? Mike had to choose between three options, 7 a.m., 3 p.m., or 11 a.m. Can you help Mike figure out the right time? The correct answer is 7 a.m. The streetlights are still on, but the sun is casting shadows from the east. Congratulations, Mike. You're hired. You're a special agent, racing at high speed in an expensive car along a four-lane highway. You're breaking all the road rules because you need to get home before it's too late. You're running a red light, the police are chasing you, and you speed up. Finally, you arrive at your street and see that your house is on fire. You run inside. All you see is flames. There are two doors. One of them leads to a safe with secret documents of great importance. A suitcase with millions of dollars is behind the second door. You have very little time to choose what you save. You take the suitcase with the money. Modern safes are fireproof. The secret documents will be safe. You run out of the house and wait for the fire to burn out. A police car pulls up. At first, they want to arrest you for dangerous driving, but they don't. Why? Because you're a special agent, remember? Now you're heading to your office. It's inside a secret base outside of the city. You meet your boss and she tells you she's going to fire you because you failed your most recent mission. But since you've always had a good relationship, your boss lets you choose any official way of dismissal. It can be your own desire, damage to the company image, or anything else. What will you choose to stay in the company as long as possible? Tell them you want to be dismissed when you've reached the age of retirement. But in the evening, sitting at home, you realize that you're actually tired of working as a special agent. So you decide to choose another, quieter job. 
you've always liked wood carving. You go online and see that there are only two furniture factories in the city. You come for an interview to the first company. You see that the furniture looks very bad and the boss seems unhappy. The next day, you go to another office. It has beautiful furniture and a kind boss. Now you have to choose which factory you want to work for. Think about it carefully. Of course, you should opt for the second company. There's beautiful furniture and a good boss. Did you think this was a trick question? You go home after the interview and decide to visit a flower store to buy a house plant. You walk around the town and see two buildings. The first one looks beautiful and stylish. Its walls are painted with beautiful flowers. A neon sign is hanging over the entrance, but there are no windows. The second building is old. The paint on the door is peeling. Some windows are broken. Where will you go to buy flowers? You choose the old building. Sunlight gets there through the windows, and this is necessary for plants to grow. You go inside the building and see three doors. The first door has a werewolf painted on it. A photo of a vampire is on the second door. A man with a chainsaw is painted on the third door. Which room will you choose? Only one of the three is a real danger. There can't be a werewolf since it's not a full moon yet. The vampire is afraid of sunlight and all the windows in the building are wide open. These two rooms are safe. You buy a house plant and leave. You go to the town square and see seven people. They seem to be regular passers-by, but you feel there are several suspicious people among them. Find them all. That guy over there is reading a newspaper, but it's turned upside down. It means he's secretly watching you. This girl is holding a radio transmitter with an antenna behind her back. And this old lady in sunglasses seems to be feeding pigeons, but her glasses are flashing with red light. There's a hidden video camera there. You throw the plant to the ground, run away from this place, and hide in an alley. On the wall of a brick building, you see several posters with different girls. A girl named Erica lives in America. Tina seems to be in Argentina. But where's Olivia? The correct answer is Bolivia. You get on a bus and go to your secret house. No one knows about it. You get off at your bus stop and climb the hill. There are three bridges across the river. People are standing at the other side of each bridge. One of these people wants to catch you, but who? It's that guy. You've seen him before. He's the one who is reading the newspaper. You cross the bridge over the river and finally arrive at your home. It's a huge round-shaped building. There are round rooms inside. You go to the living room and find a broken mirror. Your maid, gardener, and cook were supposed to visit your house today. The cook says he hasn't been to the house at all today. The gardener's been cutting flowers outside. And the maid said she's been sweeping the corners in all rooms of the top floor and hasn't broken the mirror. Who will you believe? The maid said she had been sweeping the corners, but the house is round. There are no corners here, but come on. The woman meant it as a figure of speech. She was really cleaning up. But do you see this pot in the kitchen? Light steam is coming out of it. This means the cook has actually been to the house today. He lied, which can only mean he broke the mirror. You forgive the cook and decide to walk around the house. You go to the kitchen and think, it's a good kitchen. Then you go to the cellar. This is a good cellar. You go to a good living room, then visit a good bathroom. In the end, you enter a room that is not so good. What room is this? It's your bedroom. 
You leave the house and get into a new, fast car. You're driving along an empty road at low speed and notice there's no brake pedal in the car. The road ends at the edge of a cliff. You can jump out of the car, but you don't want to abandon it. Luckily, you still have some time to think. How can you slow down? You're still moving because your foot is on the gas pedal. Just release the pedal. The car will slow down and stop. You leave the car and feel hungry. You come to the restaurant where they serve buffet meals. You approach the table with strawberries, raspberries, bananas, and apples. Some of these fruits are not fresh. Which? All of the fruit trays are almost empty, but there are a lot of strawberries left. People don't take them, so they're probably not very fresh. After eating, you go for a walk to the beach. You notice two strangers behind. They're following you, so you start walking faster. Finally, you manage to hide behind a big old boat, but the pursuers still find you. How did they do it? You've left footsteps in the sand. You decide to hide in a big old building. You put on a pair of glasses equipped with a thermal imager and walk through the ruins. Suddenly, you hear strange sounds. You turn on the flashlight and illuminate a small hall. Three zombies are heading towards you. You're about to run away, but then you realize they're not real zombies. How did you understand it? You have the thermal imager. It shows that the zombies' bodies are warm, which means they're regular people. Zombies don't produce heat. You leave the old building and see three paths in front of you. The first way leads into a swamp. The second path is covered with hot coals. The third path is swarming with venomous scorpions. Which one will you opt for? You wear sturdy shoes, running on the coals won't hurt you. After all these weird events, you return home and go to bed. It's time to check the number of correct answers and find out if you're a good special agent. 0 to 4 points. Body and mind training. This is what you need if you want to become a great agent. 5 to 8 points. Do not rush to ask for a secret mission. You haven't finished your special agent courses yet. Study harder to become a world-class agent. 9 to 12 points. You're unlikely to save the world, but you can help your neighborhood. A little more effort and you will learn how to perform secret missions on a global scale. 13 to 15 points. You're a really good agent. All this is a routine for you. You always complete dangerous missions, even if they seem to be impossible to others.